a bad economy because I'm a really big believer in the catalytic effect of universities as economic engines. But I want to start with the idea that higher education is actually in and of itself big business. Um, as an example of that, you, know, you look at Stanford, you look at UCLA, you look at a lot of these major universities, they're global brands, they have huge budgets. Um, the 3.5 billion annual budget of Stanford University is very closely approximates uh, Monterey County's total ag revenues. And it starts to speak about the the amount of money that can be generated actually just in a higher educational institution. But all things are relative, and Stanford is the locus of Silicon Valley, so they have an obvious advantage. Um, a lot of $50 billion companies and, and a huge amount of uh, history and in innovation. And Monterey Bay Public Higher Education, in comparison, uh, actually is relatively larger. How can that be? Well, the combined annual budgets of Monterey Bay-based public higher education are 1.5 billion plus. There's a little cheating in here, but you'll see how it works. And there are multiplier effects on top of that. And if you add in the average student expenditures of $150 a month, and for those of you that have had college student kids, that's a pretty low number. Um, you can quickly get up to about $4 billion in the Monterey Bay region, public. And this is where it is, UCSC, $635 billion. The largest employer in Santa Cruz County by 400%. It is larger than the next four employers combined. It is the, it is the single success, economic success story of Monterey County, or excuse me, of Santa Cruz County over the last 40 years. Plantronics being somewhat of a second, but they're much smaller. CSUMB, the largest single economic success in Monterey County over the last 10, 15 years. Um, 100 plus million dollar budget. Three community colleges with an aggregate budget of around 200 million dollars. NPG, MPS and DLI, here's my cheating, um, take it up to 1.5 billion. But these are public institutions also. Yes. So why does this matter? Well, there's a very large direct economic impact. $1.5 billion is $1.5 billion. But there's a theoretical secondary impact that we've talked about today, and this is the clustering idea. And the notion is, is that universities and colleges are core economic engines of commerce and innovation. If you look at the U.S., you see, you know, you see Silicon Valley, you see Route 128 in Massachusetts, you see Research Triangle in North Carolina. All of these areas um, have used universities as the primary catalyst for their economic development. And they have renowned research universities, in many cases centuries plus old, which we don't have, but we have sort of. We have a 45-year-old research university, um, and we have a 15-year-old comprehensive university. So is there a role for higher education institutions in this formula? Yeah. Uh, can this type of success be engineered, or is it organic? Well, the answer to that is yes. But, but there are factors. First of all, there's the institutional type. All institutional types within higher education can have some economic effects, but they vary. Then there's the institutional logic. Institutions have their own logic, what they're doing, what they are, and these have been developed over centuries, um, and they're fairly inculcated, and they need to be changed in many cases. The programs that institutions have, what their focus is. The leadership. Institutional leadership. This is uh, a brand new era for CSUMB with Eduardo taking over the helm. Public sp support. Public support has a lot of different factors to it. Private financing. If you're going to have any kind of economic development, you have to have money. Can't come from the public sector if you're going to try to build real economic development in the private sector. And there needs to be some form of a public mandate for that. So, 
starts with your institutional types. We have research universities, UCSU is an example, comprehensive universities, CSUMB is an example, undergraduate colleges, we don't have any public ones here, um, although undergraduate services are clearly provided by all three types. Community colleges, we have three, and military post-secondary and ed institutions, we have two. The logic of research universities is clearly research. Um, diversity of programs, curricula, and research. And that's the whole nature of the, of the tenure system. It's also the whole nature of the dissertation system. Incredi in, incredible increases in diversity because you have to publish something new to actually break new ground, and that creates this notion of continually spreading out, while ironically, a lot of the core of education still stays, stays the same. Uh, and that research leads to reputation, which with new ranking systems is very important in terms of the perceptions of the universities, which, and research also leads to job security in the forms of tenure, and it also leads to funding, although research funding is way down from what it used to be, at least from the federal government. But funding will be a recurrent theme through all higher education. Um, schools like CSUMB are comprehensive, more teaching, but still research, and this is changing. There's more research today than there's ever been in comprehensive universities, and part of that is, is because it drives both job security and reputation, um, and it allows more, more kind of diversity in terms of curricula. Um, also admission selectivities and uh, reputation and relationship with private sector because comprehensives are, in general, the job producing and vocationally oriented universities in this country. Community colleges, you maintain your relationship with your community, very particularly true in this state. Uh, manage the masses, and that's one of the tragedies of community colleges. Um, multiple missions, you're doing transfer preparation, you're doing vocational ed, you're doing a lot of remediation in this state. We've tasked community colleges with the bulk of remediation. Um, and they, on the other hand, have turned around and kept uh, this mantra, keep students in enrolled and max out their enrollment because that's how they get funded. Um, clearly, degree or certificate attainment and transfer is a big deal, but tragically, if you look at a rolling average over the last decade, uh, in a six-year period, these are two-year schools, fewer than 25% of the students are actually making it to either certificate or to transfer or degree. Um, community colleges have a unique thing that they have to deal with all of their uh, staff as unionized and you don't have the traditional faculty models that you have in universities. So, that, so unions are a big part of their equation, and then of course funding, funding, funding. And then you get the higher ed system in California, which is the logic of community colleges taking 70% of the graduates, CSU taking 20%, and UC taking the top 10%, with an idea, the long-standing California master plan, that the majority of people uh, coming out of CCCs are gonna move into either CSUs or UCs in their junior year. Tragically, this is not working. The system is deeply broken. This is not a surprise. Um, when Clark Purr engineered this system in 1960, he expected it to be revved every five years. It's 50 years later, it's never been revved. Um, I just added this in here because we have two most military post-secondary institutions. Clearly, research and reputation tie together. Um, Efficacy of topic-specific learning, this is particularly true at DLI, and we all know the recent NPS story as far as maintaining military discipline. So there's a different kind of um, institutional logic at these institutions. In terms of economic development, there are a set of programs that clearly are more advantageous for high-wage scale development. Those, these would be the ones that you see on the screen in front of you. Um, they're not only just general ones, but there are regional ones depending on where you are. Um, you have to play up to the assets in your region. And it's important to note that the regional economic development and innovation are not um, in the, any of the preceding institutional logic. So you don't see universities, for the most part, saying we have to create local jobs. Stanford thinks very differently, clearly, but that's just, as, as Sean alluded to, that's very much part of an accident of chairman showing up um, some now 60 years ago. Um, so how do you create conditions for economic development and innovation in public universities and colleges that have never seen that as part of their core institutional logic or their mission? 
Well, you ask, and then you help, and then you fund. Starting with educational leadership. So institutional change starts with leadership, and it starts with institutional executives, such as two of people here up on stage with me. Um, it starts with the students. It starts with the alumni. It starts with us, the community. And in this case, I mean the entire Monterey Bay. Um, it takes, starts with the taxpayers. We fund these institutions. These are public institutions. And it starts with the elected officials who put the demands. You know, the governor of Illinois turned around to the University of Illinois and said, we want you to specifically change your mission statement from being totally research driven to being an economic and innovation producer for the state of Illinois. That is the kind of leadership the political leaders in this region need to take to help these institutions take that same kind of step in transforming themselves. Program review is a big part of this. This is some of the stuff that Eduardo's doing currently. Um, you know, looking at entrepreneurial internships, uh, looking at programs oriented towards regional assets. We've got a great marine science program at both CSUMB and at UCSC. Those kind of things need to be augmented. Looking at programs that are designed with the California Master Plan, the transfer mechanism built in. This idea of the program with Hartnell and CSUMB is brilliant. That kind of cooperation needs to take place with all the universities in this region. We need to look at our community colleges, you know, the average wait list to get into the nursing programs or the radiology programs or the dental hygiene programs are three to four years. That's absurd. Let's just increase the capacity. Um, look at CSUMB. We've got a business school. We need an engineering school. Maybe we look at the ED, the only degree that the UC decided to deign to allow the CSU system, the only doctoral degree, because it's more vocationally oriented. Um, and it means public support. So lending political support, business expertise, creating internships, creating scholarships, asserting responsibility and demanding accountability from us, from our community, and reciprocally doing the same things from our publicly funded colleges and universities. This is a two-way street. There's a lot of money out there. If you come up with a good idea, there's a lot of money out there. You look at the stock market, right? We're still in, the, most of this country is still in the throes somewhat of a recession. The stock market's at a, at a potentially overinflated, but all time high. And what smart money looks for is good ideas and good people. And for us in both of those is a role of public higher education. The public mandate aspect is, is that, that we ask our higher educational institutions to, be, to become more involved in the economic future of our region and our states. Um, as I, this is kind of the notion of land-grant universities. The bulk of the major public universities in this country were, were established under the land-grant program with the specific intent to help the communities and states in which they were based. And so once again, I said we do have a right and responsibility to ask that. So where are we today here? And how do we make the Monterey Bay system of higher education work to create economic growth? And is the no growth or slow growth movement of Monterey Bay politics, and that's very true in Santa Cruz County, um, changing? Can the higher, public higher education institutions in this region cooperate to create a, a clustering effect in themselves and really to facilitate greater levels of transfer and success for students? Um, can municipalities and counties stop functioning as parochial entities and see a big, bigger regional picture? And can we understand that the slow growth mantra that, is, that has dominated this coast over the last 30 to 40 years creates an economic doldrums that in an increasingly competitive world puts us at a distinct disadvantage? So the good things is, or the good things are, thanks mom, um, this colloquium and talking about growth is a positive thing. The political changes in both of the counties that, that are on Monterey Bay, which are starting to favor economic growth and responsible growth. New leadership at CSUMB clearly understands the role of this institution in creating change and innovating in this area. And UCSC is actually starting to think this way as well. Um, so we have all the ingredients for making higher education the catalyst for change in the Monterey Bay. We've got three CCC campuses, a CSU campus, and a UC, UC campus. 
although there is very limited communication and cooperation, the exception of, say, the Hart and LCSUMB relationship, which seems to be good and robust. The bad. Um, UCSC, love it, have a kid that went there, actively involved, giving them way too much money, but they have generated very little entrepreneurial private enterprise in the Monterey Bay region over the last 45 years. There is no coordinated regional higher ed planning that involves all the institutions in the region, and most kids who were raised here, even if they go to CSU and UCSC, they leave because there are very few wage job, high wage jobs here outside of limited agriculture and tourism management um, and, wait for it, higher education. Um, turns out in Santa Cruz County, that's where you get your job. You get your job at UCSC and you got it made. The ugly. Right, the ugly is we're here. And I was here when this was a thriving community. Um, I don't believe that the number was is 800 million. I think probably Ford Ord created close to $2 billion worth of annual revenues when you look at just the after effects of the spending of all the people that were here and all the jobs created by it. Um, and since it's closed, all we really have is the big success is clearly CSUMB. Um, the shopping mall is really nice. It's nice to have an REI in Monterey County and, and on the Bay. Um, and MBEST, tragically, which looked like it was going to be something wonderful, has completely been downscaled and essentially put on a back burner by UCSC. Um, it was going to be a 135-acre world-class R&D center, and now it's a four-acre site with one building. So, um, And the, the ugly is also that, you know, $2 billion has been replaced by very little, and we're arguing about recreational areas and horse racing, which are really... I don't think high wage um, economic development formulas. It's, it's a tragedy to be here t almost 20 years post closure and seeing what we have and driving onto the campus and seeing perfectly usable buildings that could be refurbed with not that much money and turned into something real, boarded up. And when, when Eduardo says, I want to see CSUMB grow to um, 8,000 students by the year 2020. I want to see CSUMB, I'm looking at the space, I want to see CSUMB grow to 25,000, which is what it's authorized to by 2020. Heck, we have kids who can't get into schools. We have people being waitlisted because they can't transfer. And we have a, we have a huge campus here, a huge environmental, you know, a huge amount of facilities that could be utilized for that. So that's, that's, that's one of my ideas for a specific. Get behind growing this institution in a much bigger way. Grow it much, much larger than what's currently on base. And we can help make that happen by putting pressure up the stack so that the CSU system then turns around and supports it on the way back down. The, the demand is there for higher education. Um, encourage other learning entities to come here. Hell, encourage anybody to come here. Offer deeply discounted five-year leases to small and large companies, and particularly to resource-oriented entities. If we had done that 10 years ago, we might have something here. Free rent 10 years ago, we might have something here. And it's tragic to be here 10 years later and not have it. Um,